This is Thunderbird, the field. These are Thunderbirds, the planes. The sky is bright out here in Arizona. It's bright with fighting planes rolling and slicing through the sky. Thunderbird Field is more than just a field, more than just mere aeroplanes. It's a school. One of the schools operated by the United States Army, by our Army, for training the young pilots of our allies as well as our own. Here are Chinese boys. They learn to fly well, these Chinese. They have something to fight for. They remember the smoking ruins of their villages back home. They remember the rape of Nanking. And here are British boys. They fly well, too. They fly with a will to win. They, too, remember. They remember the Battle of London, the wanton destruction of life and property. And here are American boys, boys from Kansas and the coast of Maine, boys who never saw a plane close up till yesterday, boys who are soda jerkers, law school students, dry goods salesmen, high school athletes. Here they are. Here they come. Watch them fly. Thunderbird Field out here in Arizona is one of many schools of this unique kind. Officers are in charge, but the instructors are civilians. All of them helped to make this picture out here in Arizona at Thunderbird Field. Chinese, British, and American boys work together, study together, play together. They not only learn to fly, they learn to know one another, to be friends. The Chinese learn about us, and we learn about the Chinese, and the British learn about us both. It's hard work at Thunderbird. It's deadly serious work. This is primary training at its most intensive. These boys play, also they work. And they have much work to do. They become more adept at their jobs day by day. And their job is to fight and to play the game to win. Here the Thunderbird sails again, symbol of victory. What's he doing, bobbing for apples? Oh, no, he just soloed. Pretty excited, isn't he? Yeah, that ought to cool him off. <laughs> well, I find the CEO's office. You mean Colonel McDonald? That's the one. You go outside, you go this way, you go that way, you go this way, huh? upstairs. Oh, thank you. But he's not there. He's in there. Thanks. Okie doke. Anybody home? Steve Britt. Hello, Mac. You get my letter? What letter? I don't know. Did I write one? <laughs> you old <laughs> son of a gun. I want you to meet squadron leader Byrd of the RAF. This is Steve Britt. Byrd? Hey, Britt. Heard a great deal about you. I'm glad to meet you. Thanks. What are you doing out in this neck of the woods? Looking for a job. A job? You? <laughs> sure. You can use another good instructor around here, can't you? Why, of course, but... Okay. Where do I park my toothbrush? Wait a minute. Are you on the level? I was never more serious in my life, Matt. It just doesn't make sense to me. Why should a flyer like you want to bury himself out here in the desert with a war going on? What do you mean, bury myself? This is where the war is going to be won, right here on fields like this. And I want to be a part of it. Of course, if you don't think I've got what it takes. Quiet, Steve. I was just trying to catch my breath. Listen, Mac, I'm not trying to kid myself. I'm no good for combat anymore. They want babies today, kids. I'm not exactly a chicken. That doesn't mean I can't do the next best thing, train those kids. Don't you see what this would mean to a guy who couldn't be up there himself? Every one of those kids I trained would be me. Only there'd be hundreds of them. A Steve Britt Escadri over Germany and Tokyo. I'm telling you, Mac, it's the first decent idea I ever had in my life. You gotta take me. How about your eyes? You're not going blind, are you? 2020. Flying papers in order? Have a look.
Okay, Steve. I'll talk to Washington. We'll have confirmation in a couple of hours. Thanks, mate. But remember this. I have no friends here. You do the job my way, or I'll run you out of here so fast you think you're in a tailspin. Sure, Mac. That's the way I want it. I'd be awfully glad to have you with us. Thanks. I only hope I get a crack at some of those RAF boys of yours. They've been doing all right. You will. There's a new class just getting in. Would you like to look them over? Well, I'm sorry, but if you don't mind, I'd kind of like to look up an old pal of mine, Colonel Saunders. Has a ranch around here somewhere. Oh, oh yes, I know the place. The KDS Ranch, isn't That's it? That's it. How do you get there? Straight down the road, about 12 miles. Then you turn to the right, towards the hill. Okay. I'll see you in the morning, boss. What do you make of it? Search me. He's a good flyer, isn't he? Good flyer? He's what the Wright brothers had in mind when they invented the airplane. <laughs> but you know, something tells me this pal of his, Colonel Saunders, uses lipstick. Really? Gramps, I'll kiss you in a minute. You were marvelous, Steve. Really superb. Hope you brought your brownie with you. I don't need it. I have photographic eyes. Well, you can just take them. Crank up that thing and go right on back where you came from. Okay, give me my coveralls. All right. Take them. <laughs> well, Gramps, mighty nice to have you living right next door. Next door? Sure, haven't you heard? I'm over at Thunderbird Field. Oh, no, you're not. I won't have you at Thunderbird. I won't have you anywhere around here. Please don't interrupt, Kay. I'm talking to your grandfather. Yep, I'm a professor now, a reformed character. Gramps, will you leave us alone for a few minutes? Doggone it, just when things are getting hot. It's okay, Gramps, stick around. No, I'll go. Well, just as a favor to you. Darn women are skidding so the fella can't even spit. Unless they say so. Are you? Now, wait a minute. You know I was only clowning. It's not that, Steve. It's just that I've stood all I'm going to for you. Wait a minute. Let me finish. I was in love with you. I don't know why, but heaven help me, I was. I can tell you why. Because the minute we look at each other, Roman candles. The Roman candles fizzled. I never tried to kid you. I'm not a bank clerk or a night watchman punching a time clock. You knew that from the beginning. Well? It's no use, Steve. Your kind of life and mine just don't mix. Of course they do. What is all this talk? My kind of life is your kind of life. You can't get away from that any more than I can. Isn't that right? Sorry, Steve. You see, the trouble is, I came off the line a woman and not a P-38. 
Gentlemen, I brought you out here to meet Steve Britt, one of your new instructors. I'm sure he's already known to many of you by reputation, not only because of his record in the last war, but for his many flying achievements since then. He believes, as we do, that this war is going to be won in the air. That's why he's chosen to come here to Thunderbird to teach you to do the job. It's a great pleasure and a real privilege to have him with us. And I'm sure that you'll find him an understanding and a sympathetic man with whom to work. Would like to say a few words, Britt? Thanks. I'll do my talking later. <laughs> I say, old man, that's good. Gentlemen, this is an airplane. The idea is to get it up and keep it up. The most important thing of all is to bring it back. Just one more thing you have to remember. That's your parachute. If anything unusual happens, you grab that ring. Count ten and pull it. Hard. If it opens, you haven't got a thing to worry about. If it doesn't... Do we get a new one, sir? Nope. From then on, you can fly without him. Well, who wants to see what it's like up there? I, I sir. Okay, hop in. Fasten your safety belt. Good and tight. So if I decide to fly upside down, I won't have to worry about you digging holes in the runway. Come on, lads, off it. Get your morning exercise. Give him the crank. Milk. Nope. 